the difference between architectural theory and uh, human geography. Uh, in the class of research frontiers, we were presented the different topics which are currently researched at Utrecht. As you can see here, uh, I researched non presentation theory. This is actually a theory that goes into you have the material in human geography, you have the immaterial, and then you have the interaction that's in between, which is what non presentation theory researches. I looked at one of the concepts of this theory, effect, and I looked at conceptual design and the interaction that we as architects are trying to create when we are designing a building. And I tried to compare those two if they were similar. Uh, I think the theory present is very interesting for architects who are, or researchers who are uh, researching in uh, design theories, because I think it can provide an empirical background for these kind of theories. And we can actually measure whether uh, our theories are working or not, which I think until now, it's pretty difficult to communicate how a design theory actually works. Um, well, the challenges that I've had, so far I've had a very good first half year, but it was not without challenges. My first really big challenge was the reading. When I first got a paper for uh, mobilizing, I read it four times and I still had no clue what it was about. It was just way too difficult, the, the kind of ideas. And the way I just dealt with it is by looking up at the Wikipedia, a lot of the hard uh, topics, just to figure out what they said, because it's a lot easier than real scientific uh, explanations. And just practice a lot. That's the most important thing, just keep reading. Uh, another challenge was that uh, human geographers and architects actually speak different languages. When I was first told this, I didn't believe them. I actually got a little bit uh, irritated. <laughs> but I wrote the article on the number presentation of PME, and I noticed that the part that I wrote on conceptual design was written for, this, for designers. The part on number presentation of PME was written for geographers. And my teacher asked me, what are you going to do with the third part to come, where you compare the two? And I said, well, I don't know. I, it just took me a while to figure out that those things are actually different. And you have to communicate design to geographers because they have not experienced it, and it's very hard to, to explain the concept to them. And, you really, and oh, the only way to do that is actually also to practice writing. Just try it, and uh, let people read it, review it, and just try it. Um, okay, so uh, in the final part, I'll explain a little bit about the relationship between the designer and the researcher. Um, I think very basically said, researchers take things apart and designers try to put things together. And um, I think this is, can be one person, it's not a problem, but it's very difficult, it's very easy to mix those things up and I think it's very uh, important that you keep them apart because if you're a designer you need different skill sets than if you're a researcher. It's just a different kind of role that you will assume. Um, I think, like I said, one of the difficulties also that as a professional you use a lot of your personal interpretation, whereas a researcher you're supposed to be more objective. Uh, one of the current discussions that's going on in Utrecht is actually um, how those researchers, how can they communicate their research to professionals because it's uh, very difficult. I think this is something that as architects we might have an uh, advantage because uh, we already are both skilled in the profession, professional side and the research side. Well, and then I have three things that I think designers can learn from researchers. First is scientific relevance, as I explained, to find the gap. The second is that designing is definitely something different than research, I think. Um, one of, I have an example, uh, I researched non-presentation theory, I researched very briefly the architectural theory, and I looked into Eisenman and his uh, diagram as a basis for conceptual design, and I think what I saw is that although he makes a very nice theory, and it's very, if you look at human geographies, they use a lot of the same words, all of the same uh, principles, but as soon as you see him translated to design, it becomes it, the, the translation is not very clear. So it either becomes an abstract theory and it's practical, but in between is still a little bit of a mystery. And I think this is something that as designers we can work on. 
And also, um, I think the link to new jobs and planning can make this practice a little bit more empirical. So we could use it to um, find a sort of scientific basis for design. And I think the third one is that um, architecture is actually very nice. We're a little bit spoiled because when I first came to Utrecht, there were no printing facilities. Well, they have the A4 in black and white, and that's basically it. I just discovered that A0 printer, I was really happy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, computers that had two uh, screens. Uh, the social environment here is very nice. That is really something that they don't have, that you can just visit your teacher whenever you like and have a conversation. That's really, uh, I, I have to, if you want to visit your teacher in Utrecht, you have to make an appointment. If you don't make an appointment, the visit can go very long. They they're really not, do not appreciate you turning up unexpected. <laughs> uh, even if I, for my graduation project, I have three mentors here, which I could visit every, but I guess any time, and even I visit them once every two weeks regularly. And in Utrecht, this will probably be one teacher once a month. And then you have to be lucky that he has like a half an hour to an hour. So you're a lot doing a lot more on your own, which I think, yeah, I, I appreciate the facilities here a lot more since I started at Utrecht. Um, and there's also some things I think researchers can learn from designers and what we as designers should be proud of. Um, the positive attitude about the profession. Since I've started in Utrecht, they have been telling us about the difficulties and the misunderstandings about research that you cannot change the rules, all kinds of stuff. And since I started in architecture, they kept explaining to me how great it was to be an architect. And I actually like the second approach a lot more than the first. I mean, I, I understand that there is a downside to being an architect, but you don't have to throw it on people the first uh, half year of their career. Just tell me later when it's too late. <laughs> And the second one is layout. They, I mean, we seriously have an advantage in layout. They have no idea what layout is. And um, I think we cannot only contribute to the body of knowledge, but also make the body of knowledge a little bit more attractive, perhaps, because it's definitely something that's not going on right now. And I think still, still the same thing applies. If you make a nice poster, it sells better. I think if you make a nice, nice layout for an article, it also sells better. And I think the third one, maybe the most important one, is that we are being taught to think outside of the box and to make connections between multiple um, uh, th yeah, uh, topics. And I think this is something that we can use to uh, identify research gaps, which uh, is something, uh, I think a lot of times researchers are very focused on one topic and they have a hard time identifying uh, connections with other topics. And I think this is really something that we have already learned as designers here at uh, the Faculty of Architecture. Well, that was a very brief overview of my first half year, and I would like to hear your opinion about uh, what I just explained. <laughs>